بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آنیبل چیف جسٹس سپرین کورٹ آف پاکستان مس جسٹس بزار ایمار آنیبل جیجیس آف سپرین کورٹ آف پاکستان فارمر چیف جسٹس میان ساکر بن ساتھ آنیبل چیف جسٹس Islamabad High Court, Mr. Atar Minullah, my brother, Judges Lahore High Court, President Supreme Court Bar Association, Mr. S. N. Bone, Vice Chairman Pakistan Bar Council, Mr. Pushdil Khan, eminent members of legal fraternity, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. It gives me great pleasure and I feel honored to address this August gathering comprised of distinguished luminaries of the legal as well as other associate fields. Asma Jangir was pioneer of human rights movement in Pakistan. She fought and was always found on the front line of four pro-democracy movements, student unions, led protests, etc. I had the pleasure of meeting her several times <coughs> over the course of my career and always found her to be a strong will and determined lady for which she deeply respected her. I deep, deeply respected her. It is heartening to take this opportunity today to share my views on the topic, the role of judiciary in protecting human rights and strengthening democracy. It needs to be emphasized that such judicial conferences primarily serve three key purposes which are crucial to the proper administration of justice in the country. They provide an invaluable platform to lawyers and judges for the sharing of ideas across different aspects of the law. They promote communication and understanding between the bench and the bar and indeed throughout the legal community in a comfortable and harmonious environment away from the adversarial norm of our courts. And finally, allow generation of new ideas and approaches to tackle the myriad of legal issues that face not only our country today but are also relevant to nations throughout the world. There is no gainsaying the fact that the judiciary plays a pivotal role in securing societal peace by providing a structured institutionalized forum for the determination of discard and dispute and the redressal of civil and criminal wrongs and grievances. The Constitution of Pakistan, Republic of Pakistan calls for the establishment of democratic state where ideas of social justice and rule of law regime supreme. The judiciary in this regard has the heavy responsibility of being the pillar of which the values of a country are founded upon and are upheld. It is tasked with being the certainest branch of the state, a guardian of the constitution and a protector of people's fundamental rights and basic liberties. In order to be able to discharge this duty, it is vital that the judicial system 
be independent from any external influence or control in order to ensure that the principles laid on within our constitutional framework are treated as something more than mere ambitions. <laughs> so, safeguarding human rights and fundamental freedoms is an essential and integral part of all the democratic and progressive societies. Constitutional courts in Pakistan and the government of Pakistan attaches high priority to promotion and protection of human rights of with our religious authorities as well as national and international obligations. The Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan is a primarily legal source of protection of human rights, fundamental rights. The policy of the principles of policy lays on non judicial justiciable rights in the constitution which ensures full participation of women in national life, protection of minorities, promotion of social justice and eradication of the social evils, promotion of local civil uh, local self government promotion of social and economic well-being of the people and the promotion of international peace. The laws of Pakistan take their base from the constitution of Pakistan. Article 5 of the constitution places an obligation of loyalty and obedience to the constitution and law on all the citizens of Pakistan. Article 8 states that any law or any custom or usage having the force of law in so far as it is inconsistent with the rights conferred by the constitution shall to the extent of such inconsistency be wide. Further human rights covered under the constitution of Pakistan include the right of individuals to be dealt with in accordance with law, etc. Right to life and liberty is contained in Article 9, law inconsistent with or in derivation of fundamental rights are to be white. Dignity of man, freedom of speech and right to profess religion are few of the sacred rights. Moreover, 20, Article 25 is the most significant clause as it take, talks about the equality of citizens, stating all citizens are equal bef before law and are entitled to equal protection of law. Furthermore, Article 19A of the Constitution, right of information is a fundamental right. The right you have as a citizen to access information from your government and private bodies that receives public funds. Right to information is based on principle that information belongs to the people. It is considered important to empower citizens, ensure transparency in governance and improve public services by facilitating public participation and oversight. Under Article 199.2, the High Court has bested the duty of protect fundamental rights of citizens and the Supreme Court has extraordinary jurisdiction under Article 184, sub-Article 3, through which it takes up matters where fundamental rights are infringed. Pakistan judiciary has a long and distinguished history of ensuring that fundamental freedoms of all the citizens are protected and has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to the protection and enforcement of fundamental freedoms enshrined within our constitutional settlements, laws and jurisprudence. I would now take this opportunity to express my gratitude for the Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan, Mr. Justice Gurjar Ahmed. His fair faithfulness 
to constitutionalism and rule of law has been a hallmark of this judgment, is judgment, and is adherence to law, a judge of deep judicial insight. He has been part of benches deciding high profile cases and has authored many landmark judgments. A few months ago, the Honorable Supreme Court ordered for the recovery of rupees 33 million from the accused involved in the burning of Hindu temple in KPK and allowed the Hindu community to rebuild their temple as they wanted. Moreover, his daughter, while inaugurating the building of Pink Ribbon Hospital, the first ever dedicated breast cancer hospital in Pakistan, highlighted the constitution, constitutional right of women in Pakistan and said the women were not only a valuable part of the country, but a lifeline of the society. Likewise, August Wing Court took up the matter of load shedding in Karachi and observed that it was incumbent upon the federal government to ensure that the citizens were not deprived of the facility of electricity as it was a matter of right of to life. Right of dignity of men, privacy of home, right to trade and business, profession and occupation, and right to equality under the constitution. Moreover, in another human rights case, it was opined that economic prosperity was a sign qua non for the implementation of all fundamental rights, the paramount right being that of life. The word justice and the term dispensation of justice might lead you to believe that it is the sole responsibility of the judiciary to dispense justice, which is wrong. Dispensation of justice has several limits which require all three organs of the state to chip to their bit. Each of them has to perform their functions independently without interfering in the jurisdiction and domain of the other. Moreover, as per import of Article 37D of the Constitution, the state is to ensure inexpensive and expeditious justice. Dispensation of justice is in fact core principle of rule of law. The judiciary has important role in maintaining the rule, rule of law which is an, not an abstract consideration, rather it is living faith which drives its inspiration from constitutional character. The importance of administration justice is pivotal to the smooth functioning of the country. Justice ensures uniformity, impartiality and collective wisdom while its absence can lead the anarchy, inhuman behavior and actions contrary to moral values. Therefore, the concept of fair trial and due process has always been the golden principle of administration of justice. Moreover, the superior courts have contributed significantly to the growth of democracy in Pakistan. This is evident from the several decisions of the courts reviewing legislative and ex executive actions that were contrary to the provisions of the constitution. The courts have made radical pronouncement on some constitutional issues such as conduct of election, revenue allocation, division of powers, structuring of disc discretion, fundamental rights of uh, political parties and local governments which have gone a long way in strengthening the democracy in Pakistan. In Asad Ali case, PLD 2020-21 Supreme Court 770, the August Supreme Court declared Section 3 of the Punjab Local Government Act 2019 to be ultra virus. The Constitution and consequently held that local governments were existing in Punjab prior to promulgation of the said section 
stood, restored and shall complete their turn in accordance with law. It is apparent from the few references mentioned above that the courts have been alive to its constitutional responsibilities. As far as the protection of democracy is concerned, even at the grassroots level, it would not be out of place to mention here that the courts have performed more than any other organ or person in protecting citizens' rights and ensuring that there is no battle of might, but each player plays in accordance to the rule of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, the judiciary is working day and night for the purpose of improving overall justice system. And consequently, I must say that a silent revolution is taking place in our justice sector. Having said this, I must also contend that the judicial system is far from perfect because of many systemic issues that hinder the dispensation of timely justice in Pakistan, ultimately leading to situations where some groups in our society find themselves at a greater disadvantage like the minorities, women and poor. However, we must not let this prevail. To this end, we need to find ways to enhance cooperation between the judiciary, the legal fraternity and the other related institutions. I firmly believe that these steps will go a long way towards improving the justice delivery system. Hazrat Ali Taala who once remarked, I firmly believe in the rule of law as the foundation for the, all of our basic rights. It is indeed right to say rule of law is the cornerstone of all democratic societies and to strengthen democracy is to create prosperity for our future generations. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Now we move on to our concluding part. Uh, before I invite the Honorable Chief Justice,